everybody and welcome to Two Weird Didn't Watch, the show where we make fun of movies that we have not seen based on nothing but their very weird descriptions. I'm Branley. And I'm Albert. Today, we're going to kick things off talking about City Beneath the Sea from 1953. Atlantis. That is one city beneath the sea, Brantley. One might argue that there are probably many cities beneath the seas, given the sort of, you know, of evolving nature of coastlines and whatnot. <laughs> Deep sea divers Brad Carlton and Tony Bartlett are very, very white in their names, at least. Yeah. Are hired by Dwight Trevor <laughs> to locate one million dollars in gold bullion. Sunk with the ship, Lady Luck. We'll come back to that name for a second, but you want to tell the people when this movie came out? 1953? That's why everybody's so white. (laughs) Also, (laughs) Lady Luck sank. I was going to say, first of all, as a a lover of the riff tracks for the movie um, Birdemic, the exact number $1 million is so on the nose, and it's immediately followed up by a ship called Lady Luck, which is also very on the nose, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But there's no trace of the ship because of a scheme between Trevor and the supposedly missing captain of the ship. Which I can't... When was the last time gold bullion was traded? I mean, you can still get it, right? Can you? I guess I don't know. Like, so Trevor hires these two guys to find a million dollars in gold bullion, but... The captain's still around, but pretending not to be around. It's an insurance scam. I don't... Yeah, maybe, actually. That that kind of makes sense. Although, 1953, that might have been slightly sophisticated as a plot. The Lady Luck is actually amid the ruins of a submerged city. It's a really good insurance scam. <laughs> Alright, here's the deal. We're gonna get a bunch of gold bullion. We're gonna insure it. We're gonna sink it. Get this. Wait for it. On top of Atlantis. Uh, I'm tired of going to Atlantis. They got those flying sharks and those weird crab things. Following an underseas er- earthquake, some menacing voodoo drums, and a whole lot of scheming and counter scheming, the villains are disposed with. And the heroes get the girls. The heretofore unmentioned and unnamed girls. I mean, they're just girls in a 50s movie, they're not important. Next up, we have, from 1971... Oh, yeah? City Beneath the Sea. No, that's from 1953. We just covered this. No, this is 1971 City Beneath the Sea, apparently. Okay. In the 21st century... Ah, the future. A former underwater scientific installation has been repurposed as a city. Known okay. as Pacifica. To the co- okay. To the colonists who inhabit it. Right on. Now, the U.S. government has plans to store the Fort Knox gold reserves there, along with the fantastic new radio element, radioactive element. Okay, the radioactive element's dumb, but the Fort Knox in the undersea city? Okay. I think that's also kind of dumb. I can't tell if this is like a loose adaptation of the 1953 City Beneath the Sea, because they both do have this weird gold plot. That's going on, but not but like there's identical. No Atlantis. <laughs> there's no Atlantis. And exactly. there's radiation, and I don't hear three very white names listed. There's no characters in this one. Oh, uh, just... well, not that we. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a series of shots, set pieces, <laughs> with the narration. Movie told through pl- props alone. <laughs> Truly visual storytelling. <laughs> We're just gonna slap some words up on the screen. You've been tricked into reading a book in the movie theater. <laughs> it's like a silly movie, but it's just like... It's just scrolling text Wait a minute, we've been hours. here for an hour and there's not been one picture. I've been had. Uh, but someone, I guess I can't say there's no characters, really, Aww. has plans of stealing the gold. I mean, they can just say that. They don't have to show a person. And to make matters worse... The city faces imminent destruction by an asteroid heading towards it. Which, if it's an asteroid... I mean, I guess that's... That could just be any city, but now the evacu... If we're abandoning there's no characters joke, it makes evacuation a little bit harder because you're under the water. Okay. And you can't exactly leave... It also makes evacuation harder by the fact that 
if this asteroid's big enough to punch through the ocean to get down to an undersea city and wipe it out, it's it probably going it to cause tidal waves and stuff. Yeah, no, it's two feet underwater. I mean... I guess if it's like a weird... They, it could be really It's a tall. whole city. Like It could be tall. And if you hit the top or the meteor, the water's going to go down. I guess. Stop. You're, you're hurting like, my fun. Bro. It's like Mega City 1. <laughs> but underwater. It's a giant tower. Like, it starts at the bottom area of the trench, but it goes to, like, five feet below the surface. Well, next up in this episode, we have the TV series from 1962, City Beneath the Sea. Detecting a distinct pattern in your movie choice. (laughs) Yeah, well, the the, the weird thing here is... It's about gold! Somebody... Is it? It's not. I mean, the last had gold in it. You oh, tell yes, me this isn't about gold? I, it does not appear to be. I'm looking over it again. I can't remember all the specifics. I'm shocked and appalled. But the weird thing is they keep making... Like, this is not an obvious movie title to me. And it doesn't seem to have a lot of, like, cultural significance. So I don't know why people keep making movies and TV shows called City Beneath the Sea. I mean, in Russia especially, there was a plan to actually make undersea colonies. Uh, I say Russia and the Soviet Union. So there's precedence in the real world. And then you also have like C-Lab, C-Lab 2029. And that one show that had the guy who played Captain Archer in Star Trek Enterprise who was in charge of a submarine instead of the Enterprise. And there was a dolphin that would go through tubes in the sub. I'm not saying that the idea of an under, like a city underwater is crazy or stupid or nobody should make a movie about it. Also, there's the city of Rapture and Bioshock. yes. None of those is called specifically City Beneath the Sea, though. I'm just wondering what it is about this specific sequence of words that seems to call to people what between was, the late 50s and the early 70s. What was the thing the guy who wrote New Nuns with Guns said about your title? I, don't, I, I forget the exact quote, but you're talking about uh, New Nuns with Big Guns? That one. I, I believe he said you need to tell people what the movie is about in the title unless you're, like, highfalutin and you can afford to call it... Fox catcher or something. There you go. This is about cities beneath the sea. Science journalists. By the way, I don't have individual episode descriptions. For I this mean, one. if you did, this would be a really long episode. Science journalist Mark Bannerman and his <laughs> photographer assistant Peter Blake meet the Professor Westfield <laughs> at sorry, a London Gala. Sorry, Bannerman just made me think like Bruce Banner was working on a superhero name and was just really bad at it at first. I will be Banner Man, Bruce. You need no, no, no. You will not. <laughs> you don't have a banner. Why would you call your? Come on, Tony. It's my name. Yeah, shut up. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> Just go sit down and think about it, Bruce. How about? <sighs> Rolls his eyes, drinks a martini. How about this? So I, I was I was watching the movie Jaws recently, and that that shark that they have on there. I looked up some uh, some trivia about that shark, and and you know sharks are real strong. So I was thinking I could call myself Brucey. It's like no, Bruce. You're not getting the concept here. Uh. <laughs> so Bru- Mr. Ba- Mark Bannerman, <laughs> his photographer assistant, Peter Blake, they meet prof- the Professor Westfield. At a the London- Professor Westfield? The Professor we- Westfield. Wow. At a London gala, who is kidnapped. <gasps> I think Professor Westfield is kidnapped. I mean, they're the meeting gala. him. Yeah. I like the phrase, fr- it's, it's like he was kidnapped and they brought him to a gala. And they just met him there. It's like, yeah, they, uh, you know, black mask, you know, gun to my head, everything. But hey, it's a good party. I love the food. Finger sandwiches, just wow. Can I get some more of that shrimp, please? Yes, thank you. Oh, Can you untie stuff. me? No, we're so okay. I'm still kidnapped though. So they are feeding me by hand, which is very nice. Yes, no, little peel weird. those grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I'm into this. All right, let's keep this going. Blake identifies a man who was with the professor, the professor. As a former U-boat commander, Captain Curl, Captain Kurt Swindler, who vanished at the closing events of World War II. Which ones? I don't know, man. He he was on the ship when they were signing the treaty in VJ oh, Day. And they just disappeared. And, like, literally smoke-bombed out of there. And it was really impressive because they were on a ship. <laughs> just picture someone looking over and he's, like, rowing away in a boat. Fast. <laughs> he's so good. <laughs> Like, his getaway could work, but he just disappeared in front of our eyes. 
At the same time, a U-boat is reported to have been spotted off the coast of Dover. The Royal Navy intends to track it by using the new automatic... I'm sorry. Uh, by using the new atomic submarine, Cyana. slightly different things. <laughs> Bannerman and Blake are invited aboard as part... As part the restricted press coverings. Boy... Glad people are learning English from other languages, but sometimes we have to deal with this. That's fine. However, the Cyana is hijacked by Sweedler and his crew, and the Cyana's own crew are set adrift, whilst Bannerman and Blake remain hidden, where they come upon a dangerous secret on the seabed. It's a large heart beating itself as it grows back a new Godzilla body. I GMK. Man... Like, the image of a heart beating on the seabed, like a giant submarine-sized heart all by itself. It didn't need to have a Godzilla. That was just awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's the end of Godzilla, or GMK. When they blow up Godzilla, his giant heart is just beating on the bottom of the sea. That's so Lovecraftian. It's such a good movie. I mean, Godzilla's pretty Lovecraft in that one, where he's the body of a giant dinosaur that was killed with an oxygen destroyer, possessed by the souls of World War II soldiers. It's kind of a downer, though. It's a super downer movie, man. Well, like, that whole movie is just an onslaught of, this is why you should be sad. There's giant monsters, but you should be sad. <laughs> I love it. Well, we're going to wrap things up for today with a TV movie from 1969 called City Beneath the Sea. Because all the movies for today, Brentley, are called City Beneath the Sea. Because apparently that's a very attractive title. I'm still trying to figure out this pattern you're working on. This short was produced as a pilot promo for a potential futuristic underwater action-adventure sci-fi show that was meant to replace Star Trek after that show went off the air. So, Star Trek, but in the wa water track? I would track? Get, like to bring up, I can't remember what it's called, but they made Star Trek Enterprise, which was the kind of prequel show to Star Trek. Right? Where it was like one of the first Enterprise captains or whatever. And the guy who played the captain on that went on to be on a show where he was like a marine biologist and it was just Star Trek but in a submarine and then there were tubes around the ship that this dolphin that they could talk to would go around the ship to talk to people. Are you talking about Scott Bakula? Yes. Whose name is awesome because I didn't know that was his name. Okay. I'm just looking at his television. Right. Star. Okay. Trek. Enterprise. I don't, I don't see him in a submarine movie. It was a show. Show. I mean, I'm on the TV part. I know. I'm trying to see it. He was on Quantum Leap. Yes, he was. He was the dude in Quantum Leap. Is it Law and Order Special Victims Unit? It was not, nor is it Family Guy. <laughs> I thought it was close. Oh, oh. He is in... He does appear in NFL training video, colon, How Not to Murder People. As referee. Indeed. What? I think it's how to hit people without breaking their necks or something. That's just so buck wild, with... though. He was also in Untitled Bounty Hunter Project in 2013 as Pete. 2013, not a great year for him, it seems. He was on Two and a Half Men. Uh, yeah, for <laughs> one episode. Bazinga, that's from a TV show. Oh my goodness, did Two and a Half Men reference? Yes, they were made by the same guy. I know, but like, they had a I guess, they had a crossover with CSI, so why not? I'm not going down that rabbit hole. We kind of are. We're already on the Two and a Half Men page. Nope. Okay, yeah. so, Star Trek but under the water, which I also gotta say, there must have been a Star Trek where one of the cool Enterprise-type ships ended up in the sea, right? I think one of the movies that happens. Oh, I, I don't know how I missed that. I think I haven't seen all the movies, and I'm, or at least there's a whole bit where they get close to water. I can't remember. Well, there's the one where they're in the whales, but the Enterprise itself is not down there. No, that's the they're, whole time travel thingy. They've time traveled, yeah. In the future, humans and humanoid amphibians live in huge futuristic cities from the future underneath the sea. For unspecified reasons. Global warming. 
I like that there's like humanoid amphibians, but they're like, I don't know why they're living under the sea. I mean, look, sea. it's just, it's way in the future of Waterworld, so more people have adapted to have gills. There's just a whole bunch of Kevin Costner's running around putting gills on people. This is kind of a buck wild approach to like the Star Trek thing. Rather than having people go out to the stars, it's just like, what if we found aliens just in the water? Another race of people. Yeah. It's like Aquaman, but they haven't heard of us somehow. And we haven't heard of them, and then... It's like mermaids the body found. I don't... Did we do that one? No. I've seen it. Oh, no. I've seen it in its sequel? Question mark? You'll have to tell us about that in the future, Brentley. General Matthews, which I guess is the main guy. His name just came up for me, so I assume... His name just came up in the paragraph, so I assume we're supposed to know who he is. I mean, it's a TV show description, so generally it's how they work. And his small but powerful sub, Titan. How small? Uh, about three inches. Doesn't deserve the name Titan. <laughs> is approaching one of the cities when he's informed by the underwater traffic count, underwater traffic control that something is wrong. With the lava experiment that's being conducted on the ocean platform on the surface. You know, those experiments that scientists like to do with lava. That something's going wrong with it. No, 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 whatever, whatever. I don't... So they have lava on a platform on the surface. Of the ocean, yes. They're trying to make lots of obsidian. They saw it in Minecraft. Gotta get that portal going, but, uh... (laughs) They've all they've got all their diamond pickaxes lined up. The amount of power required to keep lava, lava, on the surface, like just man-powered lava, is mind-boggling. There's lasers. It's the future. I don't know what you want from these people, Brantley. <laughs> I'm curious what their goal was. And then, of course, something went gone with that much power being thrown around. Yeah, there. The next sentence, there might be a saboteur. I don't think there is. I think this is a horrible idea. That went wrong. So this was also, this was a TV pilot, so you gotta remember that at most it's like 42 minutes. Yeah. They're cramming a lot in here. But they've... Yeah, you gotta get your setting, get everything in there. They've got their saboteur, maybe. We we never got ordered to Siri, so we don't know. It's the Dr. Smith from Lost in Space, I gotcha. Who wants to cause an accident during the experiment and destroy the city for some reason. <laughs> General Matthews sub... <sighs> what, you got something? I understand that this is a pilot for a TV show, so you want to set up an ongoing plot. But it's there is a chance that there is a person who might, might want to cause a problem for a reason we can't fathom. <laughs> or Occam's Razor... Some broke (laughs) with the lava on the surface. I also like the fact that from I I don't I haven't seen this brilliantly. I I would imagine I'd be willing to bet that no one who's like within the reach of this podcast has seen this thing. The the this guy is like we don't know for sure that we ever even see this happening. He's just in his sub getting messages from underwater traffic control. About like you got you better hurry the lava oh it's coming out <laughs> it's the lowest budget thing I can imagine he's just sitting in his cockpit like listening to the screams of people they they wanted to do a radio drama but like the TV people ordered it to TV <laughs> and so they just did all the radio drama stuff but then played it into the cockpit of this guy's sub which is just some dude's van with some stuff in it <laughs> <laughs> yes some weird glasses if you're the asylum. General Matthews Sub is the only one that can get to the platform in time and check for any irregularities. I mean, that's fine. Whatever. He's the hero. It's the 60s. Whatever. It just occurred to me. Why does the general have a sub that only he's in? Normally, a general commands forces. Uh, is it an th- honorary title? He's being is there a military? around by underwater traffic control. Is his first name general? Why isn't he an admiral? I mean, whatever. No, that's a legitimate... He's in a submarine. Is he the general of the land forces and he just, like, putters around in a submarine in his spare time? I mean, it is the future. 
there are, it appears to be the entire world underwater, so maybe that's just his car. <laughs> I was just driving to work one day when underwater traffic control hey, uh, called General me Matthews, up. you're really good at uh, you know missions. Uh, law of experiment went real bad. You're might be a spy, one. might be a saboteur, might have caused a problem, might have had a reason. We don't know. Can you go check? Please? People are dying. Credits roll. Click. Here's the screams. Ah! <laughs> Click. Yeah, they're dying. Go help, please. Please? Really use some help. We're really bad at our jobs. Lest we forget, also, this is the future with humans and humanoid amphibians. I... I because I had kind of forgotten that. So it's not just... I mean, if it's Star Trek, then the human amphibians are probably either the Vulcans or the Klingons or both. So they probably don't want to help us or they're like, they can handle their own problems. Air I breathers. S- I could see this working. I could oh, really I'm a thousand see... percent on board. It's just this premise or like the plot that's actually happening is stupid. We need... I think it needs not to happen on Earth. Right, like, like a uh, colony goes out and lands on an aquatic planet, or alternate timeline, uh, just another planet with a weird, like uh, you know, similar enough society to Earth, but they don't have like our history exactly, and there's just you know humanoids for some reason. It, maybe it's like a much larger planet, so there's sure. a lot more exploring to do in the sea. I know we have a lot to, of exploring to do, but as far as like compared to space, or you can go with the uh, Power Rangers in space answer with. Earth isn't the only place that has humans. Anyway, I think that is going to do it for this week. We don't have more cities beneath the seas. I could not find any more movies or TV shows called City Beneath Beneath the Sea. If you know of a City Beneath the Sea TV or movie show, that's how that phrase should go. (laughs) Please uh, let me know. Uh, You can send a tweet to Albert underscore Berg and I will get it because that's how Twitter works. And I will know about another City Beneath the Sea. But until then... Uh, we will see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, tell a friend about us. Uh, check us out. Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't done that already. And we will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye.